Typically, when somebody talks about a really nice presentation or a really nice looking bottle, they're talking about a niche fragrance or sometimes an indie fragrance, something that you're gonna have to pony up for, something that's gonna usually cost you 200 bucks or more. But there are still some fragrances that are really inexpensive that have an attractive bottle or an interesting bottle. And today I'm gonna to be talking about some of those. Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing well. The fragrances I'm gonna be talking about here today are all typically under $40 from discounters, sometimes a lot less than that, you know, in the 20 buck range. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Let's check out some bottles that I really like, even though the fragrances are not very expensive. Now, one thing that I need to tell you guys before we jump into this is that I like the bottles, but I'm not telling you that these are necessarily high quality bottles. These are not necessarily high quality presentations. Actually, a lot of times, pretty terrible. <laughs> it's just they're so tacky that I like them. So this is bottles that I like, even though they're super cheap. It's not presentations that are mind-blowingly awesome, even though they're cheap. Those, my friend, a really inexpensive fragrance with a fantastic presentation, yeah, those are much further and farther in between. And maybe I'll cover those in a future video, but that's not for right now. Let's go ahead and get this started with Just Cavalli Blue. This bottle is pretty different. You've got this plastic sort of piece that clips onto the front of the glass bottle. So that's what you're seeing right here, just Cavalli Blue. It's got this little uh, decoration that looks like a leaf up at the top. You flip it around and there's your actual bottle. So this is glass and then you have this leaf design all over the front of the bottle here and the top and there's no cap here. The atomizer is built in. So you can see that right there. That's where you press and there's your atomizer right there. It's a very different looking style of bottle. I'll go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you guys so you can see how the atomizer works. It's okay. There it is. This one has mint, bergamot, pepper, woods, and watery notes in it. And some people compare this to Kenzo Air. Kenzo Air, in case you're unaware, is a very, very expensive discontinued fragrance that I actually love. So with that being said, is this similar enough to Kenzo Air to replace it? No, no, it's not, not in my opinion. When you first spray this one on, it's actually pretty horrible. In the first maybe four or five minutes, it's astringent, has this alcoholy smell, smells really cheap. But after that burns off, it smells really nice. So it's gonna give you sort of a, a vetivery feel, which is what ties it in with Kinzo Air and has anise-like qualities to it. So, you know, I can see what people are talking about when they compare this to Kinzo Air. It's just not quite on the level of that fragrance. That being said, for the price, it's really cool to have this in your collection because it does look very different and you can actually get some use out of it in spring, summer, and fall. Just let it dry down a little bit. That opening, not very good. Up next, Insurrection 2 Pure from Ray and Tradition and really it could be any of the Insurrection Pure fragrances. These punch way above their weight class as far as the presentation versus the price. And that's because they don't cost all that much and if somebody who knew nothing about fragrances saw this bottle, they'd probably think, yeah, yeah, that is probably pretty expensive. This is of course a clone of Creed Aventus, and it is one of the better inexpensive clones of Creed Aventus, in my opinion. There's also now Insurrection 2 Sport, so you could get that one if you're looking for a clone of Aventus Cologne. A clone of Aventus Cologne. And I also like the box that this comes in as well. It's got that little pull tab on it. You pull it out, you pop the bottle out. Looks nice, like I said, great for a cheap fragrance. And that one actually smells pretty good as well. Next up, we've got one from Rosasi, and it is woody. This one has vetiver, oud, cedar, and citrus as some of the notes in the fragrance, so not really a big surprise there to see a lot of wood notes when the fragrance is called woody, and the bottle is made out of wood. And then they also have wow right here in the corner, and then it says wild on wood right underneath that. So <laughs> they're really trying to get that across in case you're unaware. And then they have written on the front, wood has always represented endurance and steadfastness. The forests and woods which hold this wealth is considered in many cultures as sacred. It represents longevity. It represents warmth and therefore caring. And they also misspelled 
longevity on the front there. So that's good quality. And it doesn't end right there. Therefore carrying and you flip it around and boom, even more. It is a very interesting presentation. And that's why I like it. It's very, very different. And this is only 60 milliliters. That's the size this comes in. You would think it probably holds more because this is pretty substantial in size, but no, it's just two ounces. And I've got to tell you, even though I like the presentation because it is different, it does not feel good in the hand. <laughs> this is not the greatest fragrance bottle ever to hold and spray because it's, it's just a block of wood. <laughs> There's nothing here that lets it fit into your hand very well. There's nothing here that, you know, conforms to the shape of your hand. So that isn't the greatest, but the bottle is definitely unique. Reminds me of the, uh, the old D squared wood bottles. As far as the scent itself, some people compare this to Encre Noir from Lalique, which also could have been on this list because that is a great bottle for a cheap price, but I wanted to go with some tackier ones here if I'm honest with you. This is definitely a woody fragrance, but it's more vetiver than anything else. So if you like vetiver-based fragrances, absolutely check this one out. It is very nice in the bottle, different. This next one is just maximum tacky. That's why I like it. It is from French Connection, which is great because it says FC UK, so all like the young kids out there can see it and be like, uh, it's almost like a bad word. And it is late night for him. This fragrance, like I said, is just maximum tacky, and I love it. The cheap plastic on there, the neon all over it, yeah, awesome. One thing to keep in mind with this fragrance, if you do pick this up, you decide to buy it one day, you know, take a flyer on it. This atomizer is not very good. I had to prime this thing probably 50 times before it sprayed once. So I was just constantly just over and over pressing the atomizer on this. I thought it was broken. I legitimately pressed it more times than I've ever had to prime a fragrance and then finally it sprayed. And there it goes. The fragrance itself is really, really sweet. There's tonka, there's pear, there's pomegranate, there's citrus. It is a syrupy, sweet fragrance made, surprisingly, for nights out. Now it's enormously inexpensive, so don't go into this thinking it's gonna be some super hidden gem, top-notch fragrance that smells niche, but you only had to pay 15 bucks for it. And, and frankly, if you get this bottle in and think that's what you're gonna get, I don't know why you would think that. <laughs> and it reminds me of uh, actually a number of different fragrances out there. When you smell it, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's got this familiarity to it, but um, the scent itself is, is actually usable. You would think that it would be just complete garbage and smell like rubbing alcohol, but there is actually a scent in there. More for a younger guy, definitely. And you have to love really synthetically syrupy sweet fragrances, but it's something that a lot of people could actually pull off, believe it or not. And by that, I mean it is a potential compliment getter. Yeah. This next fragrance, I love the bottle. I really, really, truly do. And the fragrance is terrible. It is so bad. It is diesel green. And this is the men's version. There's also a ladies version. I love the bottle. Like I said, look at that. It's like a little bug sprayer. I love the bottle. I love it. It looks awesome. It looks like a little, like a pesticide spray. Like you'd go out into your garden and spray this trying to kill bugs. And uh, the atomizer is it's not great. I'll go ahead and spray it a few times. There we go. Just kind of a weak little. There are green notes, florals, and woods in here. Actually a lot of different floral notes in this fragrance. And it's just not good. The fragrance isn't good. Now, it's not the worst thing I've ever smelled, and it definitely smells better off a tester strip than skin, but it's just a very, 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 very synthetic green fragrance, which I guess shouldn't be a surprise at all. It's called Diesel Green, and it's in kind of a bug spray bottle. Now I'm cheating a little bit because this fragrance you can't find as of this video at discounters. You used to be able to find it for next to nothing, but nowadays it's more difficult to find. You can still find it on eBay if you want to, 
but I don't suggest doing it. Unless you just really need to have this in your collection because of the, the interesting bottle, I suggest not buying it. And actually, I tried to give this away in a giveaway, and the person that won it never claimed it. So, still got it. And I guess I'll just keep it. Next up, Tommy Bahama Maritime. And really, it could be any of the fragrances in this line. This one has lavender, pink pepper, cedar, and bergamot as some of the notes in the fragrance. And this one smells similar to uh, Mont Blanc Legend and Abercrombie and & Fitch Fierce. The bottle itself is not really anything super interesting. It's not anything super new. I just like the way it looks. It really just comes down to that. The bottle itself is a simplistic shape Simplistic design, but it looks good, feels good in your hand. I like this little wooden piece that they sit over top of the bottle that separates the bottle from the cap. And I really, really, really like the cap itself. I know maybe it doesn't look like a whole lot. I just like the attention to detail here on a Tommy Bahama fragrance. It's nice and heavy, it's metallic, and this little rope that wraps all the way around, I really dig does a great job of encapsulating that Tommy Bahama nautical theme, that nautical feeling. And I think that the, the whole bottle, the whole presentation is great for a cheapie. As far as the fragrance itself, like I said, similar to Legend, similar to Fierce. So wherever you would use those fragrances, that's where you would use this one right here. Very versatile, big compliment puller, easy to pull off. Is it something really new, unique? No, absolutely not. But it is a tried, tested, and true fragrance DNA, if you want to call it that. Last up, Paco Rabanne Ultraviolet and Ultra Red. Yeah, these bottles are cool. In case you've never seen them, the atomizer is here and you press down on what's supposed to be the little ultraviolet light and then there it goes. This one has mint, amber, spices, vanilla, and oak moss as some of the notes in the fragrance. And it's kind of an interesting scent because you can pick up a lot of the mint and then also a lot of the amber as well. And those two notes you don't usually see paired up. Mint a lot of times used for more spring summertime fragrances that are going for really green, fresh, brisk, sweet feeling in the opening. And then amber of course used more often in fall and wintertime fragrances, giving a nice sense of warmth and sweetness in the dry down. The fragrance does have a little bit of a synthetic feel, but it still smells very, very good. And it's a fragrance I like to wear to switch things up sometimes because very few people are wearing ultraviolet nowadays. Also, it looks a little bit like a, like a stapler, doesn't it? Yeah, kind of like a little staple gun. So ultraviolet from Paco Rabanne is gonna wrap this list up. This is actually one of the more affordable Paco Rabanne fragrances out there, and I think one of the more unique ones also. So there we go, seven cheap fragrances with bottles that I dig. Again, not necessarily telling you guys that these are the pinnacle, the absolute top, the elite of fragrance presentations, but they're definitely different. This one though, this one is elite, this is, can't, can't really do much better than this. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there, and I will see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.